Hello, welcome back. I'm Statman Dave, and today we're going to be explaining how Xabi Alonso has created a new style of football using elements taken from two of the best coaches in modern football, Jurgen Klopp and Pep Guardiola, as well as relational concepts and tactics used by Unai Emery and Roberto De Zerbi. Remember to subscribe if you're new, smash that like button. But anyway, let's get this party started. Under the management of Xabi Alonso by Leverkusen, have gone from a club threatened with relegation to arguably the best team in the Bundesliga, thanks to Xabi Alonso. The Spaniard has taken elements from two very polarising tactical approaches, along with other elements to create his own highly effective and entertaining style of football. Favouring a 3-4-2-1, Alonso's Leverkusen are an extremely well-drilled modern football team. They like to dominate possession and use counter-pressing to try and win the ball back when they lose it. But Alonso's tactics are far more than this. The Spaniard is inexperienced for a top-level coach, having managed since 2018 with Real Sociedad's youth team and B team. But as a player, Alonso played under some of the best coaches in the modern game. From Rafa Benitez at Liverpool to Jose Mourinho and Carlo Ancelotti at Real Madrid, Alonso even spent his twilight years playing under Pep Guardiola at Bayern Munich. His footballing education career is stuff of legends and it seems that like Alonso has already taken it on board and created his own unique style. Without the ball, Alonso's Leverkusen defend in a 5-2-2-1. The defensive block is narrow and compact, which makes them difficult to play through as it provides a solid rest defence for the black and reds. But they aren't a placid low block team, instead Leverkusen try and force turnovers through pressure from their defensive block. Meanwhile, when they lose possession, they deploy a very effective counter-press. This kind of intense and aggressive pressing from a narrow, compact starting shape has become synonymous with Jurgen Klopp and his style of play that's better known as Gagan pressing. Refining his style at Borussia Dortmund in a 4-2-3-1 and perfecting it at Liverpool in his 4-3-3, Klopp's approach combines a narrow, zonal structure with a ball-orientated pressing scheme, as his players look to flood the area around the ball to form turnovers through tackles or clearances. Alonso has built on these foundations at Leverkusen but he's also evolved them to suit his own needs. Leverkusen's 5-2-2-1 defensive block is obviously quite a different starting shape to Klopp's back fours but Alonso's tactics are still very effective. The two attacking midfielders and striker operate like a front three and how they function varies on opponent to opponent. In some scenarios like up against the back three the tens push high and allow Leverkusen's front three to go man-to-man -man on the centre-backs. In others, like when facing and orchestrating number six in a 4-3-3, the striker will pick up the opposition number six, whilst the tens press the centre-backs. Regardless of individual setup, Leverkusen try and force the opposition to play from out wide into the centre of the pitch. This capitalises on the strength of their shape, with their box midfield creating a natural overload in central areas, whilst the three centre-backs are free to jump out of shape and support midfield. Whilst this sounds pretty simple and avoidable for well-drilled opponents, Leverkusen make life difficult with their mobile, energetic and aggressive front three, notably the two attacking midfielders, putting players in possession under constant pressure. This sets the tone for the rest of Leverkusen's pressers, with Ezekiel Palacios supporting the second line well with energy and pace, and the centre-backs also stepping up when they've been penetrated. This constant pressure means if opponents try to play out from the back against Leverkusen, then they have to play quickly and with urgency, which can force mistakes like misplaced passes that can be easily intercepted or the opposition will clear the ball, leading to easy ball recoveries. This approach has made Leverkusen very effective pressers, with Alonso's men actually making the most ball recoveries and forcing the most high turnovers in the Bundesliga this season. A big reason for the strength of Leverkusen's press is that much like Klopp teams, Alonso's Leverkusen use a zonal approach, where the midfield fielders are responsible for the space in behind the front three, but they have to judge whether to step up and help the press or when to drop off and protect the shape. Fortunately for Alonso, Palacios and Xhaka are both intelligent pressers who perform very well in these roles. What's more is that Leverkusen will use their ability to press and restrict their opponents to dictate where they attack, often forcing them backwards with pressure or into central pressing traps. Even if their press is bypassed, the three centre-backs and usually one of the wing backs are often able to slow down the attack whilst the rest of the team hurry and get back into shape. 
The overall recovery speed of Leverkusen is very good, and it's testament to Alonso's coaching how well drilled the players are and how they've bought into the system. But Leverkusen are much more than a team that relies on their press to create chances. In possession, Alonso's men are very impressive too, with only Bayern Munich scoring more goals per 90 across Europe's top five leagues this season than Bayer Leverkusen. A discipline of positional play, it's clear that Alonso has taken inspiration from Pep Guardiola's time as Bayern Munich manager. When Alonso heavily featured, with Guardiola describing his former number six as one of the best midfielders ever. In possession, we often see Leverkusen adopt a 3-2-5 attacking structure, but as stated by Alonso himself, there's less of a focus on a rigid system at Leverkusen, with more attention given to where the players need to be to best capitalise on 1v1 advantages, as well as to position themselves well if possession is lost and they need to counter-press. This attention to counter-press naturally sees Leverkusen adopt quite a narrow attacking unit, with lots of players in close proximity of one another, whilst the width is often held by the right wing-back, or at times the striker. The closeness of the players, often in central areas, draws comparisons with another visionary coach, Fernando Diniz. The relational style adopted by Diniz sees players position position themselves around the ball, whilst the positional style favoured by Guardiola sees players position themselves in space. If you want a more in-depth look at what relationalism is in football, then go and check out this video on Diniz's Fluminese. Alonso's tactics might draw elements from functional play, with the fluidity of his players and movements, and at times the verticality of their passing, but most of their game is centred around positional play. Like with Klopp, Guardiola has inspired Alonso, but the Bass-born coach has adapted Guardiola his ideas to suit his own play style. Like Guardiola, Alonso likes his team to control the match by dominating possession, largely using short passing combinations to recycle the ball. But whilst Guardiola teams line up with a back four that transitions to a back three, Alonso's men line up in a back three that transitions to a back four for build up in their own third. Usually the left wing back, Grimaldo, drops into a natural left back position, whilst the right wing back advances into a natural wing position, with the right centre back adopting a wide centre back role and shuttling out to the full back position. This creates something of a 4-2-4 or a 4-2 build up shape. The same shape that's been popularised in the Premier League by Roberto De Zerbi and Una Emery. The strength of this shape is that six outfielders plus a goalkeeper are in the build up which gives Leverkusen a numerical advantage against even the most extreme pressing structures, meaning it's very difficult to force a turnover against them or even disrupt the build up. Meanwhile, an opponent's backline can be pinned with just two players, either with the two nominal strikers taking up the positions in the channels, or by having the nominal wingers adopt high and wide positions to pin the fullbacks. For Leverkusen, it's actually a combination of both, as naturally you'll see the right wing back move into a right wing position and even attack that inside channel, with the centre forward attacking the other channel, pinning the opposition's backline. Regardless, if an opponent tries to press Leverkusen high, Alonso's men will pass through the pressure with their numerical advantages and high levels of technical skills, much like we've come to expect from Deserby's Brighton, or they'll simply bypass the pressure with a long ball into the forwards, like we've seen time and time again from Unai Emery's Aston Villa this season. We saw the latter in Florian Wirtz's goal against Eintracht Frankfurt. After stopping a Frankfurt attack, Leverkusen has the ball, and Jonathan Tarr receives a backwards pass from Fringpong. With Frankfurt trying to counter-press, Tarr goes back to the goalkeeper, who takes eight players out of the game with a long ball to Boniface. The striker controls, then releases Verts in behind the defence who pulls off a fantastic chip over the goalkeeper. This goal is almost something you'd expect from a route one side, not a progressive, possession-based team who favours short passing. Meanwhile, in the Europa League, we saw Leverkusen pass through Mould's pressure with what essentially was their B team. After starting the play from a free kick, Leverkusen go all the way back to their goalkeeper. Under pressure, Lom passes to Grimaldo who finds taps over. Before the centre-back even receives, Mulder in big trouble as their man-to-man -man press has left a huge space at number 10 and in the right wing-back position. The narrowness of Leverkusen's midfield too and the width of their attacking midfielders opens up a simple passing lane for taps over into Mbamba. The 19-year-old receives, turns and carries, creating a 3v3 for Leverkusen on Mulder's back line. Mbamba releases Loshek into the channel who carries away from the pressure and smashes the ball over the goalkeeper into the back of the net. This goal speaks volumes about
about the quality of Alonso. Despite starting just three of his best 11, Alonso still has Leverkusen playing the same kind of tactically intelligent possession-based football that's capable of carving through Europa League quality defences with ease. In advanced areas, Leverkusen are extremely fluid and often interchange positions to create unpredictability in their attacks. The majority of their rotation happens between the left wing back, the left central midfielder, and the left number 10, whilst on the right it's between the wing back, the outside centre back, and the number 10. This asymmetrical approach isn't just there to make most of their individual quality, but it goes deeper than that. Unlike most modern possession based sides who like to attack in a symmetrical and balanced nature down both flanks, Leverkusen tend to build and create down their left hand side but finish off moves on the right hand side. Nathan Teller's goal in Leverkusen's 3-2 away win over RB Leipzig really highlights this. After more than a minute of sustained pressure, Leverkusen have possession on halfway with Hincapi. The centre back plays wide to Wirtz, who carries at Simicon. Thanks to Grimaldo's intelligent underlap, space is opened up inside. Wirtz capitalises, the German cuts inside and finds Hoffmann, who pushes the ball back out wide to Grimaldo. At this point, Leverkusen have dragged all of Leipzig's players onto the far side of the pitch, but Schick and Teller effectively have a 2v1 on left back David Raum. Again, Leverkusen exploit this as Grimaldo sends in a low cross that finds Teller at the back post, who can't miss. In the final third, chances are often created through width, with Leverkusen using positional concepts to create, building down one flank but switching the play to the other side to attack the space, usually through midfield as opposed to a big, long diagonal, as well as using underlaps and third man runs to attack the byline before sending in cutbacks or low crosses. The final third is also where we see the most interesting rotations of the players interchanging positions, but still maintaining a loose positional structure. What's more is that like most top Size Leverkusen are also superb from dead balls. They're very creative in these situations, and we've seen them score a lot of goals from in swing deliveries to the middle or back post, as well as low cutbacks to get a shot off from the edge of the box. In fact, per 90 across Europe's top five leagues, no team has scored more goals from set pieces than Bayer Leverkusen. So, to conclude, what actually is Chabi Alonso's style of play? Leverkusen try and dominate possession and play out the back from the goalkeeper, using short passes to retain the ball and quick combinations play with intelligent rotation and movement to carve through teams with ease. When facing pressure from the opponent, Leverkusen can just as easily pass it through with a short passing as they can bypass the press entirely by hitting long balls into their forwards. Unusually, they tend to build and create down the left-hand side, using their right-hand side as more of a goal-scoring or finishing flank. Width is a key element in the final third, with both wing-backs providing a different but just an effective attacking option. Jeremy Fringpo is a dynamic winger who punishes space, whilst Alex Grimaldo is a complete wing back and honestly one of the best players in Europe this season, as he's comfortable playing in a deep fullback position, inverting into midfield, as well as providing creativity and a goal threat in the final third. Leverkusen have a variety of ways of putting the ball in the back of the net, and it's highlighted by the stats. After 18 Bundesliga matches, their top scorer has just 10 goals, but they have five players who have already got 10 plus goals or assists. In reference, the next best team is Pep Guardiola's Manchester City, who have four players with 10 plus goals and assists. Defensively, Leverkusen deploy an aggressive counter press when they lose possession. And if they can't regain the ball, they drop into a compact 5 2 2 1 as they look to force their opponents to play out wide and then into the center of the pitch where there's pressure with their box midfield and a numerical superiority, which allows them to force turnovers before they launch quick counter attacks. In short, Xabi Alonso already has the makings of an elite coach. He took over Leverkusen when the club were in 17th position with just five five points from their opening eight matches in the 22-23 season. But since then, only Bayern Munich have picked up more points than Alonso's men. If Alonso can continue his offensive back five that takes elements from Guardiola's positional play and Klopp's gegen pressing and combines them with relational concepts, he will lead the next generation of great coaches. But anyway, guys, what do you think? Will Xabi Alonso be one of the next best managers in the world of football? Let me know. I've been starting my day. Subscribe, you know. See you later. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, why not check out some more content on the Statman Dave YouTube channel?